the whole neighborhood knew Jerry. <laughs> Gennaro Pellegrini Jr. grew up in the Port Richmond section of Philadelphia and wanted to be a police officer just like his father. But Jerry had a wild side. He was fighting all the time, so I said to him, yo, how about if we go to the gym? And that's where the street fighter became a skilled boxer, a Golden Gloves champ who wanted to turn pro. But that was just one of his dreams. He still wanted to become a cop. Jerry joined the National Guard, thinking it would help his chances. It did. Tough Jerry Pellegrini was back on the streets, except now he had a badge and a knockout punch. Jerry used both to collar a carjacking suspect after a chase. Jerry kept chasing him, caught up with him. The guy punched Jerry twice. Jerry just looked at him and just one punch, and the guy was up off his feet and out cold. Jerry cracked him and knocked him out. So that's how they got his one punch. With his new nickname, One Punch was itching to get back in the ring. His first professional fight was scheduled for September 13th, 2001. It never happened. 9-11 changed Jerry's life in ways yet to be imagined. Three years later, he was going to Iraq. But first, he had to do one thing. We're gonna do this, we'll make it happen tonight. Fill my dreams. This was Jerry's dream. His first professional fight at the famous Blue Horizon. Jerry pounded his opponent, James Andre Harris, for three rounds. The police and National Guard who filled the arena were cheering for a knockout, but Jerry was running out of gas. The end of the third round, Jerry's in his corner. And he's telling Charlie, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And Charlie's saying, yo, you go in there, back in there, relax. Get back in there for your father. You can see trainer Charlie Squirrello say, do it for your dad. And that's all one punch needed to hear. All the emotion of the moment and the moments yet to come were right there on Jerry's face. Two months later, 30-year-old Jerry Pellegrini was on the front lines, undefeated and feeling invincible. Everybody's gonna come back safe from Iraq. Come back safe, come back safe. About the same time that Jerry left, 18-year-old Eagle Scout Nate DeTample was graduating from Pensbury High School in Bucks County. I was proud to be a Boy Scout. Uh, you know, most high school kids would hide that, but he would never hide, he was quite proud of you. Nate also never hid his smile his love of his country, or his dream. He wanted to become a police officer like his dad. Nate joined the National Guard in high school, knowing the possibilities. A year later, he had to leave Shippensburg University as the possibilities became a reality. Babyface Nate to Temple was going to Iraq. You know, just when you get over, you find yourself a good NCO. And you stick to him like glue. That NCO? turned out to be Corporal Jerry Pellegrini. Jerry emailed us and told us he had a 19-year-old kid that just came in, uh, Nate, he says, and I'm, you know, keeping him under my wing. It just brought such a comfort um, to me, being his mom, that my 19-year-old son was with somebody like Jerry. He had someone looking over him, and he wasn't there alone. It brought comfort to one son's mother and pride to one son's father. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, my, I, was, I was proud of my son, regardless of what he did. There, it's my man. The two became inseparable. When fifth graders from Hackett Elementary School in Kensington sent letters to local soldiers in Iraq, only one wrote back. Dear fifth grade class, most of the children do not even have shoes. Jerry Pellegrini asked the kids to collect flip-flops for some poor Iraqi kids who didn't have shoes. <laughs> A few months later, there's Nate the Temple taking video of his buddy Jerry Pellegrini handing out the flip-flops courtesy of Kensington. It just got ridiculous. Like they were just like climbing all over the Humvees and grabbing stuff and it was I think people in America just don't appreciate how good we have it. Sergeant Dan South was in Iraq with Nate and Jerry. He was the only one in his squad to come home alive. Still to this day, I don't remember getting hit. 
the next thing I remember is sitting in an open field, and it was all shadowy from, you know, from a fire, from the Humvee. It was an IED buried in the road, powerful enough to blow up a tank. South was blown from the driver's seat and sent flying 100 feet away over a six-foot wall. The other four in the Humvee were killed instantly. 24-year-old Sergeant Francis Straub from Philadelphia, 35-year-old specialist John Kulik of Harleysville, along with Jerry Pellegrini and Nate the Temple. The ultimate question is why me? Why me? Why me? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. It's not that I survived, it's that I walked away. You know, like I should be bare minimum missing a limb. Back in Philadelphia at the National Guard Armory, Sergeant Angelo Ciano got the news about his best friend. He was given the task of telling Jerry's father that his only son was dead. I looked at him and he already saw my eyes were already, they were so puffed from crying that he, then he knew. I knew it. That was it. They don't come to your door for nothing. And I just, you know, grabbed them. We just held each other for about four or five minutes and it was, it was, it was a real bad time. At the same time, the news was being delivered to the DeTample home in Morrisville. But Kim DeTample already knew. She felt a pain in her heart at the exact moment that Nate died. I'd never felt that before. And I really think the good Lord was preparing my heart for the news that we would get. I miss him every day. Um, but, I mean, things happen for a reason. And uh, I truly believe he made a difference. He did, and so did Jerry. <laughs> Hackett Elementary is still collecting flip-flops for Iraqi children who have no shoes. And although Jerry, Nate, Frank, and John can't be there to distribute them, others are proud to take their place. It'll be an honor for me to keep Jerry's flip-flop drive going on once we get over in Iraq. Sergeant Ciano is going to Iraq. He carries memories on his arm and in his heart. Dan South doesn't want to go back. I honestly believe that every person has so much luck, a certain amount of luck in their life, and I'm pretty sure I'm tapped out. He thinks the best way he can honor his brothers who died is to remember them. In fact, that's good advice for us all. It shouldn't just be Memorial Day. You know, people, you know, every day you should understand that the sacrifices that people make you can't even comprehend. It's a sacrifice that the Temples and Pellegrinis comprehend too well. Their sons died as brothers in arms. The least we can do is take a moment to remember.